It was a test. You thought it was real? <laughs> <laughs> now we're online. All right. First of all, thank you, girls, for making it happen from South from South China, Shenzhen, from uh, Mexico. in China. It's my honor to have you here today. And today, uh, before we start, I really would like to express my gratitude to the committee of Harassis, Dr. Richter and the team, and the amazing panel speakers right here. Before we start, I would like to introduce myself to you briefly. Uh, my name is May. I'm the founder of Cosmic Citizens and also the co-chair of Young Leader Leadership Committee of the Global CSR Foundation. And before we start, let's reflect on our topic today. The US and China female entrepreneurs bring the gap together. So let me introduce your first speaker, Li Tong Li. She's actually also my best friend. Oh, Je Jessica, Jessica, let's start with Jess. She's also one of my best friends from the United States and we know each other for over 10 years um, when she was the co-founder of Cloud Mall. And now she is working on the finance technology uh, field and also has established her own brand on skincare. So now let's give the stage to Jessica Trevino. It's my honor to have you here. Thank you so much, May. It is an honor for me to be here tonight sharing this forum with all of you. And I would like to um, point a very simple principles that I believe that are very important when we speak about trust. Trust is a very um, sensitive topic, but um, through my years of uh, living in China, the US, Mexico, I have came across with many different situations. And um, I, I would like to share with you three principle, uh, I'm sorry, three principles that I feel like are very important. The first one is political acceptance. We need to be involved in helping our elected leaders to create positive legislation that supports cross-border investments. It is up to us as business leaders to understand and advocate for positive principles and changes that can influence international relationships through the use of support groups, organizations, programs, and social media interaction. We have to find ways to make our values known. The second principle is impact of, of values in business. We are constantly moving, changing, and progressing. As we progress into the fourth industrial revolution, we are experiencing changes in the ways we live, work, and interact. It is an era in human and technological advances where artificial intelligence, driven by big data, are fueling the fourth industrial revolution. These advances are integrating physical and biological worlds in ways to create both huge promise and potential risk. At the same time, we're moving in such a high speed rate um, uh, into this revolution, which is forcing us to change our mindset in new ways to create value as a human being. I'd like to point at the weforum.org statement, and I really, really like uh, their uh, statement on, on the four revolution, um, industri industrial revolution, I'm sorry. Um, they said it's not about only technology-driven change, but it's an opportunity to help everyone, including leaders, policymakers, and people from all income groups and nations to harness technologies in order to create an inclusive human-centered future. I cannot agree more with this. We have the chance to see beyond cultural division and gender stereotypes, whether we are Americans or Chinese, female women, female men, the opportunity is to even look beyond technology and center our actions based on values because we, at the end, we're one race, the human race. Values are very powerful. They are the heart of every individual and every organization as they reflect what is important according to their individual goals. Research has shown that companies with aligned values are twice as successful with execution and almost twice more likely to show higher profitability and growth. In my experience, here are the top values that I find the most fundamental. Communication, honesty, humility, and integrity. In order to create trust, we must change our behaviors and live our lives with integrity. And how do we prove this? Through following our values daily in everything that we do. 
If we can live diligently following these principles, we can create a more trusted and unified world. And the last principle is to serve as an example and be the change. There was a moment in my life where I felt like I had the need to put my energy into more projects with more impact to the world. So I joined Glass, a payable company that supports organization that, organizations that promotes trust and transparency. And I, find, I found that when we surround ourselves with business and people who promote and live with the same values, harmony and success will follow. That's it. Thank you so much, Jess. I really love the four things you just mentioned, communication, honesty, integrity, and humi humility. It, this, is, this is the theme, not only in your industry, but also in every aspect of life, and not even only in business or between China and the US. Thank you so much for sharing your insights. And I will ask you some questions towards your speech later on. And I would like to give the stage to our second speaker, Li Tong Li. Li Tong Li is an activist in the public welfare small animal protection. She's also the founder of Striving Apaca, and she also has over a million fans uh, as a blogger in China and travel around the world with her uh, dogs and cats in RV, and also a global private director of Cosmic Citizen University. And Li Tong, please share your insights with us. Okay. Hello, everyone. <laughs> My great honor to meet you. Uh, I'm Li Tong, the founder of Thriving Ablaka Co Limited, which is the number one food chain solution for pet life sharing service provider. Meanwhile, I'm a pet blogger, uh, over one million fans, and we've traveled around the, uh, the world with the dogs and the cats in RV and share the stories by video, uh, by video online. And also, I'm the global private director of cosmetics university and the follower of Mei Chen. <laughs> All because I joined the cosmetic citizens a university that encourages, uh, women, uh, women to be independent, confident, and to be themselves. I started the pet business that I have always dreamed of. And in 2019, uh, I participated in the study tour of the United United uh, United Nations with cosmetics, and made a speech about small animal welfare in Columbia University and Harvard Club. Thank you, Mayor again. And to uh, in 2020, uh, due to uh, coronavirus, uh, live stream uh, streaming e-commerce industry flourishing in China. And we have also entered the industry selling pet related products through short videos and live streaming. Many American pet brands are, are very popular in Chinese markets, such as Rock Bear and Animat, Formal, uh, Stella Chewies, etc. And in future, we also plan to sell pet products from China to the United uh, United States and the world, yeah, uh, like through the TikTok by short videos and live broadcasting. And thank you very much of, uh, uh, for the invitation of cosmetic citizens today. Uh, it's my great honor to meet and share with you at the uh, at the meeting, and look forward to more links and the discussion with you. Thank you, Lee Tong. Uh, thank you indeed for your warm words and your gratitude attitude. And next, I would like to invite uh, Sarah Gobi to share your insights on this topic. Sarah Gobi is a transformational coach, international speaker, and adventurer in the wilds of Canada. So even though it is a theme about China and U.S., we are warmly coming global leaders from all over the world to join in our discussion. She has toured in national with Tony Robbins and uh, Rachel Hollis, and also She's known for work connecting clients to their deepest purpose. And today her title is Community is Built on the Backs of Women. Please, let's welcome Sarah. Thank you so much, Thank May. So and just to build on the uh, the theme that we've already seen here from the amazing speeches from, from Jess and Lee Tong, I, I think that what we're seeing here today is really the result 
of female leaders already building these bridges and building them through community. So I'm very, very grateful to have this opportunity to share ideas and inspiration with you. I'm honored to be a part of this uh, panel and discuss these ideas. And I think that given that if I'm having network trouble, just let me know if I freeze. Um, I do think that business leaders, in particular female business leaders, are perfectly poised to be bridging this divide that we see between the USA and China. And, and most especially in the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, we're seeing these historical power politics dynamics that have created the silo effect really that, that led to nationalism competition and a lot of adversarial relations. And none of that serves any of us at any levels. So it's become clear that the main topic of, of this panel has been trust. And we can't afford to sit around and wait for our nations and policymakers to sort it out for themselves when trust globally in both of these governments is at a all time low, but public trust actually may, remains fairly high in business. So given the leadership styles that we know female business leaders to have, we have what it takes to foster that trust, to nurture it and use it to bridge these divides. Women, when in leadership, tend to be more empathetic. We tend to be more purpose driven, more visionary and more transformational, which are all keys in fostering these ties of trust. We're we're talking about how we're becoming more self-confident and, and taking more high risk ventures than our male counterparts. And to me, it's it's almost a natural side effect of of being a female leader in business simply because if a female, if a woman has made it to the C-suites, has made it on an entrepreneurial journey, she already has proven that she is a phenomenal leader simply by pushing through the obstacles that face any women in business in both countries. And what we face also is that in both countries, although China has a much higher rate of female business leaders than the U.S., both are trending downward right now. Because not only do we face these obstacles, but with the pandemic, women are disproportionately impacted. We see the impacts, women, people of color, those with disabilities, we're falling out of the business system because we're faced with these choices. And so when we look at fostering trust, when we look at how trust is strongest right now in business, we also see that women's leadership styles tend to be more empathetic, visionary, all of the things. And if we're going to move forward in a way that continues fostering trust, that includes purposeful leadership, that takes these relationships from transactional to transformational, which is what we need, we have to use these skills that women in business have. We know the importance of strategic leadership and enlisting a community around our vision. You're seeing that in action with this very panel. May and Cosmic Citizens, she is such a strong force. She's built all these relationships and brought all of these women together to discuss this topic. And so it's and it's also, I would say, very telling that we're doing this on a platform that was actually founded by a Chinese woman in order to address this very issue. And so we're seeing that women leaders, we do all of this already. So I know that when we're in a place like these panels and horasis and it sounds very obvious and possibly reductive to say that the idea the the solution that we face what we must focus on is shared values is community because when we show up here we show up with that sense of open curiosity and trust and and the intention to share a vision the intention to find shared values and move forward but what we're seeing right now in the world is that's not commonplace and what we're often seeing is that these events serve as their own silo. Because the ideas that get discussed here often don't get taken into practice, except yeah. in the business sector. And so in spite of the technological divides and the firewalls and the economic alienation and all of the barriers that we have, we have to focus first if we're going to use business to address these issues, to bridge these gaps, our first focus has to be on creating these meaningful relationships and having these shared values with other female business leaders in both countries. It's been deeply transformational. I, I would venture to say, not to put words in our mouth, but for everyone within this panel, and I 
would say we're not alone. Other people within this event have experienced this as well. And so in terms of moving forward, um, the keys would be building those authentic relationships based on those shared values, um, like Jess shared, the honesty, um, the commitment to shared values, the, the commitment to going first and fostering that sense of trust and deep relationship that will then lend itself to the strategic alliances based on solving the shared problems, the, the technological divides, the environmental issues, the economic silos that have created all of these issues. And then from there, we also have to focus on the membership to break that silo and really bring other women leaders, leaders of all sorts up to really celebrate us. So I think that the ideas and profit within the business sector may be what builds these bridges, but it will be the quality of relationships that we're able to foster that will maintain them so we can truly close these gaps. So, so thank you. Love it. love it, absolutely love it. Thank you so much, Sarah. I'm so inspired by your attention to details and bring everything together, including the the supplier, the founder, and all the speakers here to all together. It's just wonderful. It's my honor to have you right here. Thank you so much, Sarah. And I'll ask you questions shortly. And now I'd like to give the stage to Weili Duan Yang. Um, I'll introduce briefly. Weili holds a master's degree in behavior analysis and therapy from Southern Illinois University. And she finally led one of the largest mental health agencies in Central Florida for 16 years. In 2011, she was appointed by Orlando May as an ambassador to China and was received by President Clinton. So in 2014, she founded Doris Duan Yang Autism Center in Dubai, which now has a staff team from 16 different countries. 2020, during COVID-19, founded Athena Sister, and I'm one, I'm, I'm one member of it. And also she's a best-selling books on the field of autism and has been publishing in such publication as the Journal of Applied Behavior Analysis and Behavior Interventions. Colin, she's working on her first memoir. Very exciting. And now let's warm, warmly welcome Willie Duan Yang. Thank you, thank you, thank you, sweetheart. That was very kind of you. So I want to thank you, first of all, for Harances to give me this opportunity to speak. And uh, I, I was invited to speak about how as a feminine leadership, that we bridge the gaps between the USA and uh, China. But I have a very strong feel is if we are actually tapped into our feminine energy, tap into our feminine core, I don't see division. I really just see unity. So I'm going to give you a little bit background of myself. So you see how did I come up with this pretty bold statement? Yeah, okay. So I was born in Shandong, China. And about seven years old, I moved to Shanghai. And at age 22, I moved to United States. So the first few years was really tough. I remember after graduation, I told my husband, I don't want another piece of chicken whatsoever because we've been having chicken for years. That was like 19 cents a pound. That was the only thing we could afford, right? So from that, then I built a few uh, companies up from ground zero and all the way to about eight figures. And uh, like you said, yes, I was very fortunate. I was uh, received by President Clinton. And, you know, as a little girl, grew up in the village, I was never imagined that my life could be as such. Everybody said, you're a successful businesswoman. But I was actually feeling not happy, quite miserable. So I was like, what's wrong with me? I was 41 years old by then. And I had a beautiful family, I had two kids already. So then I discovered, you know why? It's because I was living in my masculine core the entire time. Because for us, I think all, probably all of you, my sisters, you can relate. For us to survive in a male dominant society, like we use a lot of our masculine energies, right? And all of us have both. We have the feminine and masculine but one was kind of being suppressed. So I find out that's the reason why I wasn't happy. I wasn't tapped into me. My feminine energy was really just sleeping. So I went on search and study all around the world. Then I find kind of a freedom, flow of living. You know, I used to wear suits all the time. It has to be certain ways. Now, whatever pleases me, right? So 
then I want to share. So this was about 2015. I brought a group of Chinese businesswomen from China to Hawaii. And in front of my eyes, I saw about five, six days, the transformation of these sisters. Like you watch them walk into the convention room and it was, um, you know, you have the name brand bags, right? Like high heels, shoes, but you can sense there is a masculine mask because the energy is kind of, sometimes is very competitive. You want to put on an image, but as we start to get into the body movement, you see that facade just coming down. They become softer, they become more in flow. I mean, we start to really fall in love with each other. And this <laughs> one woman, I remember it was like day four, and she was the most put together person in the group. She just started to bawl, she started to cry. And through translation, we learned a little bit about her story. And this is a retreat mainly by um, Western, like people from Canada, people from United States, but some Europeans, but then these 16 Chinese women. And then one sister got up, started to put her hand on this Chinese woman, businesswoman's shoulder. And the next sister come. And before you know it, it was like a puddle. We call ourselves like the puppy puddles. It was a puddle of sisters on top of each other, which is all hugging and, you know, crying. And which is such a beautiful picture. That was the moment I'm like, aha, uh -huh, this is the unity. There's no division. It's not the language who's dividing us. When we are in the feminine core, just like Sarah said, right? It's that compassion that will come out. It's actually we as feminine creatures, we love to build communities. We love to share. We love to like raise each other up. But the masculine energy taught us to be competitive, to be focused, to execute. I'm not saying we don't need them. We do, but like we have two hands. Why do we tie one hand behind our back and only use one hand? That's quite silly. I mean, I will want to use both of my energies, right? So I find out after we tap into our feminine energy, actually you attract more things to your life. Before it was always like you have to achieve, you have to drive, but now things just come to me because I'm the light. I mean, who doesn't want to come closer to the light, right? So in Asina Sisterhood, we have this saying, it's just called that we are sisters, not by blood, but truly by heart. So I consider every one of you my sister since we're sharing this beautiful space together on Zoom, on this space. So you're all my sisters by heart. So I will encourage every single sister to really just be the light and let your radiance shine. And in the sisterhood, the beauty is, it's not only just a few brave women. No, 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 no. It's every single sister. When we tap into our radiance and bring the courageous self up into this world, that's how we bring our balance in, in a very not balanced world right now. So sisters, just shine your light. Thank you so much for sharing this space with me. Love to you all, love to you all. That is wonderful. You touched my heart. It's wonderful, sweet, warm, and visioned. We do need many more leaders like you all to bring bridge this gap, to bridge the gap between the hearts, the borders, and businesses, industries all together. Thank you so much, Wayley sister. It was a great, great choice to have you join us today. It's, 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 I am so inspired. And so now let's go to the discussion session. And we have listened to Jessica, Li Tong, Sarah, and Whaley speech. I'm full, full of inspiration. And I have a question for Jess. It seems like all of us come from a small city and make our life happen around the world. How exciting. And Jess, we met um, in China, and she, she's a true global citizen, Mexico, China, around the world. Everyone speaks Chinese, Spanish, and Chinese, and English, of course. And, and but not many people knew that actually she is from a small town in Mexico, and she was born in a family of seven kids. I thought I have four siblings. I've uh, been the fourth of five siblings, and she 
So mother is a role model, a strong entrepreneur, hardworking woman, and you know North Mexico, and she had a dream to become a global citizen, a successful entrepreneur. So I would like to invite Jess to share with us when you pursue your dream, um, becoming a global successful female entrepreneur. What is the biggest obstacle that you have when you try to? Um, Enter the market of China, and now you are expanding global business in the United States and Mexico. Please share with us your story. Thanks, May. Um, well, I think um, maybe you all will relate with me because when you're young and you have like no fear, I think that was injected by my mother. I have been blessed by being surrounded by an amazing mother who was my role model. She was the mother of five kids, hardworking and entrepreneur, uh, taking care of her kids. I mean, I just remember the, I mean, it was not challenges for my mom. I was like, my mom was like super mom. And she will pick us up from the, from the school and she will take us to work with her. And I remember she saying, if you behave, I'm gonna take you out for a hamburger for a, a Burger King or something, I can't really remember. Um, so we were like literally just doing homework in the car or something because my mom, I mean, that was like obvious for us that we, that was our life. And I grew up and I, you know, interacting with my friends and some friends sharing that, oh, my mom doesn't work. She doesn't, and I was like, oh, my mom is not normal then. <laughs> so I just, felt like I was just so powered up by my mom because that was my, my example my whole life. So um, I, everything was just not enough for me. So I wanted to learn more languages and I was, you know, I wanted to go to China. I wanted to do a lot of things and I accomplished quite a lot of things during my uh, university studies. Um, organizing, you know, trips, student trips to Cuba and to the United States and uh, just being involved with uh, very influential people. And it was always women that really influenced my life. Uh, we visited, the, when I was 18, my first trip out of uh, um, college, well, not out of college, like a, a, school, a school trip. Um, we went to Cuba and the ambassador of Cuba in Mexico, uh, the, the ambassador of Cuba, uh, I'm sorry, the Mexican ambassador in Cuba was a woman. And I was like, wow, she's, she's amazing. And she was like showing us everything that she does. And I mean, it was just for me, I never thought about how am I going to do this? I was just thinking about, I'm going to do this and I would just go for it. And I, it was not for me obstacles. And it seems like when you carry that energy, you always, uh, like Whaley said, you always you kind of like are the light and you always things come to you. And I'm very blessed that I really always came across with really good people um, in my life. And of course, things to become start to become more real when you are out of school and then you start to uh, start your businesses. And then challenges start to come like naturally and challenges become sometimes, uh, you know, more difficult and or some failures and, but it's okay. Like I felt like it was, it had to be this way uh, to grow. And it, China has a very special uh, place in my heart, and May knows that. Um, it, I I love the country. I admire all the women like you guys. And there's a lot of amazing. Uh, you know, it's it's just the culture. I really appreciate a lot. And I, I embrace all the challenges. I felt like also China gave me a lot and, and great friendships like May. And it's always good things to learn. And so I feel like it's never, it, comes, it becomes addictive. You know, it's like you, 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 and you I don't know. It's like a, you have to pass certain circumstances that are, are challenges to make you yourself uh, grow and understand that, that that's the real world and then just take it for an experience and, and move on. And I think that's where I am right now. I, I feel like it's it's been a journey and a journey of growth. And of course, we still have a lot to, to learn. And uh, as now I'm in Mexico, I'm in Tulum and it's still now it's another type of challenges even if I'm in my own country. 
thank you so much, Jess. It's wonderful. It's indeed it's a great journey to see yourself chasing your dream and seeing it coming true piece by piece, more and more. And at the same time, you're inspiring so many friends around you, including myself. And it's it's a true inspiration to be on your side. And and now I would like to invite Li Tong to share your vision of your business towards um, the future and globally. I know you your your branding now is number one in China, providing the pet streaming service in China and. protect animals and yeah please share with us your vision about your business towards your um, towards the future and and expand globally yeah um uh, uh, now my business is on uh, you know chinese tiktok the chinese tiktok called douyin yeah and um in future i mentioned in in my speech we will um uh go into the uh the uh, the tiktok in the world and by short video and uh live streaming e-commerce e to share our um uh to share our chinese good brands into the um the 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 uh how do you say martyrs uh, martyrs of the past <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh -huh. i love it Thank you. Mm -hmm. And we have a few minutes left. Let's have some insights discussion from Sarah and also our sister Wei Li. With you girls are the true leaders I spot on Tony Robbins event. And please oh. have a true discussion right here. And yeah, please show, because you talk about um, the authentic relationship, the quality of the relationship. You, uh, Wei Li talk about um, opening up connect from heart. It's, it's a true, it's the same meaning, but expressing different words. So Sarah, do you have any question for Sister Whaley? Uh, any kind of discussion, open platform. I, I would love to say Whaley, I agree wholeheartedly with you. And it's such a breath of fresh air after sitting through this event all day to have such a radiant amount of feminine energy in the room. It's it's not something we've seen so far in the ideas being shared. And so in terms of, I think, the relationship between the two answers, clearly there's A, some shared value there. Um, and B, I think I was more of the the masculine interpretation of what Wei Li was saying. It's, it's all the same at the root. If we come at it from that place of authenticity and shine that forward, with the truth of our values, with the truth of who we are, we automatically attract more in terms of the relationships we build, the, including both with customers and with each other and, and other structures that can help heal uh, some of the divides that we see in the world and as well with ourselves. So thank, thank you. you. Please, please build yeah. on that. <laughs> thank you, Zara. And Whaley, please. So it's, I feel it's not only us as a woman that we have, because we had to play this role. It's like we were not the one who set the rules, right? It's the, it's the masculine dominant society. We have to play this role. But now it's time for us to step in to play a bigger role because the whole world right now is totally imbalanced. Like Deepak Chopra was saying, right now, actually, we're entering in a state of like massive just in balance is because the whole half of the human psyche, the feminine has been suppressed, has been ignored, has been neglected. And we can't neglect ourselves. We are, we are life. We give birth and we are life. Why would we neglect our own life force, right? So this is my strong belief in Asina sisterhood. We have now 1400 women in the group and we're just about one year old. And we have about 50 different countries right now. And every program is free. It's completely volunteer based. It's all the sisters who jump in off of whatever they have. So I really would open up and invite you to join Asina Sisterhood. We have the four values is wisdom, pass on the courage, inspiration, and peace. That peace is not just a world peace. It's actually inner peace. That's, I think, my 
I'm, I turned 50 this year. So at this stage of my life, I want to pass this wisdom that I've gained all these years to the younger generation and for all the sisters to share their wisdom. And the peace is for inner peace. It's that, oh, I can take a breath and say, hey, this is who I am. It doesn't matter. With or without makeup, I'm showing up as who I am. So thank you again for this opportunity to be here with all of you. So beautiful. Yeah. This is so wonderful. You just won my heart. We do need so much more family energy and inspiration to this world. I have to say I've been living in my masculine core for the past three decades. And meeting you definitely frees me up. Like, okay, right. Actually, you can be a female leader with fe uh, with family energy and s with the same power. This is just amazing. Because in more. China, we're just opening up a little bit with women empowerment, women development, women leadership. But we thought we have to be full independent to be that person, to be on a C-suite, to be in a room. No, actually, we can leverage our family energy to be that person. Absolutely. I would say yes for all my best friends from all over the world, Sarah, Jess, Leon, to join Sisterhood of Athena and to be a family together, empowering more people from China, from Canada, from Mexico, from the United States and make an impact together. Thank you so much. Beautiful. And we have Spanish, we have French, we have Mandarin right now. Actually, it's hosted in Hong Kong. So all languages, whatever you want to bring in, sisters, let's add more light. <laughs> that is wonderful. Thank you so much to my dear, dear, dear friends, Willy, Li Tong, Jessica, and Gobi. It is a wonderful discussion, and I look forward to seeing you soon in our Cosmic Citizen discussion, Harassi's next meeting, and Athena Hood, uh, uh, Sisterhood of Athena, and many more offline events. I'll be seeing you soon, as soon as the COVID-19 is over. We'll be host, hosting our event offline. I will see you globally in the RV, in the offline event, in the seminar, everywhere. Thank you so much. Thank you. I love you.